They lived in poverty. They lived in get like it's a mindset. Do you want to rise up, or do you want to continue to let the environment you're in and the generational curse continue? Because someone needs to rise up and save that family. One hundred and ten percent. I couldn't and agree more. Coming from an oppressed people, coming from immigrants, coming from a war zone, coming from disaster, starting in the Bronx, which was a shithole, especially during that time period in my family. Well, now it's pretty decent. My grandfather could have made excuses. I don't speak the language. Uh, woe was me. They, they threw all my family in jail. I, you know. No, he, he put his head down like a fucking man. Put his head down. I said, I got to take care of my family. And he busted his ass. And once he was strong, he helped others. And they lifted each other out of poverty. Today, Albanians own half the fucking Bronx. They came here with nothing. Mm. But it was the mindset of, we got to get through this. We can't give up. Definitely. If we, if we stick together. And there will never be a better generation of my people than that generation. I've never seen that type of success anywhere else for our people because they had no choice also. So when they came, they really stuck together. They were a minority. There was no Albanians here. And there's something to be said about that. So, you know, a lot of times you can have the crabs in a bucket mentality when you're an oppressed people. This is not, this is common in many, many uh, societies that have had trauma and oppression where they only focus on themselves and not the hive. Mm. right the individual bee is not worried about the colony so there is power when you can work together within your own community and do yep. things you know one of the communities that i love you know besides obviously the jewish american community the greatest example of what it's like when you can stick together and work and do amazing things right with a small amount of people 13 million people but they have an enormous impact on the world mm. including social media right oh yeah zuckerberg and right but right. the, the Korean American community, I'm very impressed with the way they work together, the way they collaborate. You know, a lot of times it's through their churches and they help people get money and start businesses and they lend each other. So, like, it's amazing what they do to each other right. to help each other. Um, so there's something to be learned about that, not, not mad about. I've mm -hmm. never once, like, looked at the Jewish community and be like, oh, I well, maybe we should learn something from them. Learn something that, from them, 110%, yeah. There's something to be admired about that, that you can come back from catastrophe, mm. okay, almost being annihilated, chased out of every country in Europe, thrown into concentration camps and incinerated, and rise up again, unite, and take over a place and make it your country overnight. Uh and have such an impact, right? So I admire, I've always told, you know, and I have cousins that are, you know, of Jewish descent. Um, so it's something to be admired about how strong you can be when you stick together, man. And it's like the analogy of like, if I give you one stick, say here, break it, you'll break it, one twig. But if I give you a hundred twigs and I say, go ahead, break it, you're not breaking that. No. Nope. And this is where I think a lot of other communities, they, they miss the ball. Because it's me, 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 me. And everyone's fighting for a scrap instead of like, you know what, let's put you on first, then you. And, like, and there's like a methodical process where you all rise up together, right? A, tide, a good tide raises all the boats. So, 100%, yeah. I, I have huge admiration for... The Albanian community, because what you guys did in North in the Northeast is very similar to what we did in Miami. You know, it was a city that didn't have much before we came here, and we ran away from a dictatorship looking for freedom, and we built a city from nothing. You know what I mean? And Miami has become a capital of many things. And if it wasn't for us, it wouldn't be that. You know, I'm very proud of of what we've been able to accomplish in the city. And some people ask me why why I stay here, you know, because a lot of people have moved Because it's here. popping, that's why. <laughs> Miami's popping, bro. I want to go to 11. Hey, whenever you come down here, make sure you call me. <laughs> shout, out to my, shout out to my man, Red. Red, if you're watching this, he runs the door over there at 11. That's awesome. You ever been yeah, to 11? I, me personally, yeah, I've been there. I've been there a while back. I don't, I'm not into, heavy into clubs anymore, but 
I know that. Married? That's, uh, huh? You married? No, not yet. Hopefully one day. I want to have kids, okay. get married, that kind of thing, you know? How old are you? I'm 30. All right. You got a little time left. Little time, yeah. So, yeah, man. I know I know the club scene was was definitely your your territory up in New York. So, that's... uh. I know, I know you took over the promotion scene for quite some time. Nightlife is a very dangerous environment to get used to if you don't have discipline. Oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of people go down. I've seen a lot of people pass away. And if you don't control it, it will control you. But the nightlife can be a wonderful place. It can be this nonstop playground. It's like... Never, never land. You know, people go, oh, don't you feel weird that you're 40 years old? No, I don't feel weird, bro. I feel great. I go out every night. I meet amazing people. I have friends literally all over the world. I can make a phone call anywhere I am on earth. I got somewhere to sleep if I need it, God forbid. It's awesome. I like my hotels, you know. I like my privacy. But I got an amazing network. I've made friends with some of the most amazing people in the world. Celebrities, musicians. At all walks of life, man. I've met some of the most brilliant people in the nightlife. <coughs> I always tell people, you know, I don't drink. So if you stick to really just having some discipline, and if you're focused, the nightlife can be a great resource for you as long as you don't get pulled in. But it's very easy to get pulled in. You know, you got the opposite sex always looking their best. Because people don't go out to clubs looking like, you know, bums for the most part. You're right. <laughs> They get dressed up, they look good, you know, especially the women, they always look phenomenal. So it's easy to get carried away in the excesses, but sure. the benefits of it are that people have their hair down. It's easier to start conversations. It's people know that they're going to have to interact. Someone that's in there is probably in a social mood. You can develop great business contacts. You can develop all kinds of stuff, man. It's just, it's a really good place to build a network. And if you're going to the right places, you don't want to go to shitty places. You want to go, you know, you can go try to get into places that are very high end. Everyone in there is successful. You have places like Casa de Cipriani, right? It's like members only. It's all freaking, there's fucking billionaires in there. You're at the bar having a drink. Next thing you know, you're, you're talking to a billionaire or a, a CEO of a tech company. So it's like also knowing where you're at and how to, Use that environment to your advantage, but also how to start conversations where you don't come off cheesy mm. or as like a bloodsucker or a vampire. There's a way to have a conversation. There's a way to open a door, and there's a way to, to have a network. I think a lot of people don't have patience when they're networking. Oof. Instead of worrying about making the other person like them and vice versa, they as soon as they start talking, well, what do you do? I do that, and they, they go straight to business. And a lot of times when you go straight to business, people can sense it. They feel it. They're like, oh, this guy's a fucking shark or he's a blood sucker, right? right? Yeah. For I've me, always believed in taking, you know, you, you take your time when you get to know people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let them really get to see who you are. Let, let them, you know, fall for you, in love with you, you know? And you try to do a favor for them before you ever ask for one yourself. Super important. That's the best way to do it, man. Hey, you know, I have a friend of mine who, you know, I'll be like, you know, why don't you? It's like, I hate asking for favors. He's like, I want to save that for when I really need something. Yep. And I looked at it like it's a currency. Yeah, definitely. The nightlife, network, networking in general, me personally, I've learned that it's not so much what you can get out of the other person. It's more forming a relationship and you got to have a long-term vision for when you're networking and when you meet people. You're, you're definitely right. The, the art of communication isn't something common nowadays. Most people... No, it's not. It's yeah. lacking, actually. It's, it's lacking. People don't really know how to have a productive conversation. You know, a conversation has structure, whether you realize it or not. And the most effective business people and the most effective salespeople, the most effective networkers are those that have structure when they speak. And they follow the same routine. The way they open up a conversation, the way they, this, they probably use the same jokes. Right. But they make it sound like it's the first time they've ever said it when they say it to you. They're very 
cunning and very clever when they speak and they use their words like currency they don't just waste their words because you can over speak too you can talk too much or what we say is go past the clothes so when you're out there in the nightlife you should talk to everybody because you'd be amazed at how many people are in that world that are like very successful and how small that world is it's like one big family i know everybody in you know nightlife they all know me you know, even if you're not in the business as much anymore, you know, you kind of like earn this place where, you know, there's just like a respect. It's like, even right. though he's not in the game no more, this guy was in the game for so long. It's like a family, man. There's a like common courtesy. I could go to a club in Miami and say, hey, I've been in nightlife in New York 20 years. They're like, you know what? Like, hey, you come up to New York, anything you need, they'll open the rope, man. I can't tell you how many times I went to like the hottest place. My friend's like, how are you going to? I'm, I'm going to get us in. No worry. Because it's like a big fraternity. It's a big mm. network. And we do reciprocate respect because it's just, you know, everyone looks at us like we're fucking degenerates, but we're really not. We're business people, we're hustlers, and we live a different lifestyle, man. I personally don't drink. So, you know, I don't do drugs. I did drink. I used to drink a lot. And I haven't drank in over 10 years. So it is what it is. You can either let the nightlife consume you or you can use it to your advantage. There's no middle there. Yeah. You know, when you started talking about the art of conversation and structure, I remembered one of the 48 Laws of Power from Robert Greene's book. It said, uh, be silent. Don't say more than is necessary. I think people fuck up conversations all the time by talking too much. They don't realize that there's moments. I'm guilty of that. Ah, well, you have something to say. That's the difference. When you have something to say, talk. When you don't, don't. Don't speak. It's like you said, pick your words and use them and be methodical in what you say. When I was younger, I always thought in my mind, let me try to shine right now. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I have to say something. But what people don't realize when they're younger is that sometimes not saying anything is more powerful because people always wonder, like, why is this guy so quiet? Mm -hmm. Why is he so reserved? And sometimes there's a power in being silent. And then you, they ask you questions, and then you can shine. Because it means they actually want to know. Right. 100%. There's always a mystery to, to being quiet, right? Or the mysterious one. People kind of, they always want to figure you out. And that's that, that book changed my life, man. I, Robert Greene's my favorite author. I've read all his books. He's at 48 Laws of Power, 33 Strategies of War, Art of Seduction, all that stuff. Very, very practical books. It's uh wait wait till my book comes out. Hey. Sell it. or die. I love by it. Beck Lover. I'll buy a copy. No worries. You gotta get, I gotta get a copy. Send you my book. I gotta get a copy of your book, man. You were supposed to send me one a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Well, I'll send you one out. So this week. what people don't know about me and you is that I used to work with your uncle. That's right. Yeah, Christian told me. He told me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Chris. I don't know if you want to say his last name. You want to say his last name? Christian Lopez, yeah. He was uh he was on an episode last season. It's he's family. It's my Did uh, he ever tell you about what I used to do on that sales floor? A little bit, not too much. You can tell me what. Tell me. Fucking I was a fucking a fucking cleaner, bro, not a closer. <laughs> He'll <awesome>. tell you. <laughs> you know, selling timeshare is not an easy thing to do, my no, friend. No, but you can make some big money if you know what you're doing. That's for Yo, sure. Oh, you want to be a big guy. You want to make the big bucks. Let's see how tough you are. <laughs> so I'll tell you something. <laughs> I tell anyone that's in sales, if you can do six months in timeshare, even if you don't want to stay in that career, it will teach you a lot about sales. Yes. It will teach you a lot about the psychology of clients. And really the steps that they use are probably the most powerful ways to shift the mindset of an individual and to bend their will towards yours. Mm. It teaches you how to have thick skin and how to, <clears throat> so many people, and when they go into sales, they're like, man, you know, like they, people just have this negative connotation and they don't realize that everything in this life is a sale. Oh yeah. You, you, you know, reaching out to me, get on your show. I don't just go on anybody's show. And it's not to be arrogant, and I do go on shows that are not big, or I'm not saying yours is not. I'm just saying, like, I, I get reached out to all the time. And I do go on shows that are just starting out because I remember what it was like to just start out. 
Mm. I wasn't always at the top of the podcast world. But to convince someone to come on your show in the beginning is not easy. Why should this big slave, why should Carol Baskin come on my show? The whole world knew who she was. Why should Rachel Ray come on my show? So there's a power in, you know, knowing how to communicate. But really, that's all sales is, is knowing how to communicate to the individual that you are trying to conduct business with. Definitely. I, what I love about sales is you get paid in direct proportion to how you develop yourself. You know, if you have the right skills and you develop yourself in a way where you can communicate and you can understand other people and you can put these things together, you get paid big money. You know, you know for me, sales and being in the nightlife hand in hand added so much to my experience and my character and developing the thick skin of not being scared to talk to people. Mm. I'll go and f I'll speak in front of a hundred thousand people. No problem. I won't even blink an eye. Brother. I'll probably get a hard on is what I'll get. <laughs> and you know, there's something about sales that, you know, people need to go and do it. I don't care. 100%. It's so important. Man. I mean, I'm, the fact it's not a college course is crazy. Is mind boggling. To me. Yep. Because really college was a fucking joke. I'll be real with you. I had straight A's. I can pull up my transcripts. Anybody want to challenge me? If you want to look up in the National Honor Society, see if my name's there. I don't know if you can, but it's there. Uh, I was brilliant in, in high school. I got an academic scholarship to college. And I feel like what I learned, in, you know, I went into sales immediately during college. I was 18 years old. I started in commercial leasing, which was very brutal in New York City. I got thrown out of every, every building in Midtown Manhattan, literally. I went door to door. And as much as I hated it at that time, and it was scary, man. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to go into these buildings. I got to try to ask people questions. They don't know me. I'm a stranger. And I got seconds before they call security. And they did. They used to throw me out all the time. I got thrown out of every fucking building. Man. But once I realized all I have to do is figure out how to make this conversation keep going. Mm. And I didn't know how to do it at first, but I started through trial and error, trial and error, develop, and, and, and it's a process, bro. And eventually you get numb and you don't care anymore what people think or what's going to happen because you're focused, you're motivated, and you want to get that money. And sales is a phenomenal way. Like If you're not in sales and you work in the corporate world, you know, you're only going to make what they pay you and you're never going to make more. It doesn't matter how hard you work. Maybe they give you some bullshit bonus, but sales is where it's at, man.